Hey guys, what's up today? Um, I needed an axe for some of the bigger uh, pieces of elm wood, the dead elm trees that are dying off, and uh, I cut a couple down with my chainsaw, and we'll probably use some of that for firewood, and uh, I wanted to split some of the bigger pieces. So, I found this axe head in the shop and it had a busted handle. It was a wooden handle and it's an older axe. It's rusty. So I put it on the wire wheel on the bench grinder and I, I removed most of the iron oxide, the rust, on the surface. But you can tell that it's old steel. And old steel is some of the best steel. Um, the steel, I could go and buy an axe at the hardware store for like anywhere between 15 to 35 bucks for, you know, just a quick grab an axe. Some of them have fiberglass handles now and rubber grips and the rubber grips don't last long and yeah. A lot of the steel heads are made in China now and they're like stuff you buy at the hardware stores. Unless you get some real quality piece, um, you're going to pay good money for a real quality. Like a Cavalier compared to a Cadillac, you're going to pay good money for quality nowadays. It used to be, um, people used to take pride in quality and selling quality, and but now... Uh, Things are a little bit different nowadays, and a lot of the stuff you find is cheaply made for maximum profits. And it's sad, but that's the way the world works nowadays. So, um, I wanted to get an axe handle to fix this. Now, this is an older axe head. It's got a little bit of weight, but it's not too big. And uh, it doesn't take a huge handle. So, the first thing I did was I removed the iron oxide, the rust with the wire wheel on the bench grinder and then I put an edge on it because it was a little bit dull it's pretty sharp now and I did that on the bench grinder also I removed the wood that was in here with a hammer and punch there was wood swelled in there and the handle was sticking out but it was broken so I punched that out I've heard people say that you can burn that out but when you put the heat to the steel you're gonna lose if this is forged or tempered you're going to distemper the steel and it's not going to hold an edge quite the same if you get this too hot and if you don't quench it or if you don't cool it properly you're going to distemper the metal so don't try to burn out that wood in there if you can help it um, unless you're able to and knowledgeable on how to forge that or um, temper it so it'll hold a nice sharp edge and not be brittle I don't recommend trying to burn the wood out of there. So anyway, I knocked the wood out, I cleaned it up, I put an edge on it. And then I took, uh, I went to the hardware store to find a handle, and they didn't even have handles at the hardware store. They had, uh, like I said, they had some axes that you can, you can buy a complete axe with a fiberglass handle and rubber grips. And I have experience with axes, and I don't like the fiberglass handles or the rubber grips because they usually don't last long. I'm not saying the wood's going to last any longer or anything like that. Like, whatever works for you, works for you. So, But this is what I want to do. Uh, I might save a couple dollars, and I might be able to make a video and, you know, and show you guys how to save a dollar at the same time. But if you don't have the... If you don't have the patience or the facilities or the tools or whatever... Go ahead and buy one. Go ahead and buy an axe. I like doing it this way. So I couldn't get a handle at all at the hardware store. They didn't have any. They had like some made in China axes, which I didn't really want. And uh, they were reasonably priced for an axe. But they sent me, uh, when I requested a handle, they sent me to the local uh, convenience store. And the convenience stores, there's a couple local convenience stores around here. And they have like a little bit of everything. Some They have some more tools than the actual hardware stores have. So I went to the convenience store and uh, 
this I got this at a convenience store, this handle. And uh I was told that uh you want one that's not not varnished or lacquered or anything like that. And uh and a white color and hardwood obviously, but this is what I got and this is what they had. They had a bigger one, but I didn't want anything too big. This is going to be perfect for me and for the size of this axe head, I think. So I fit I fit the axe head on here and I had to um I actually used my knife almost like a draw knife and I shaved it down a little bit and you're going to have to do that. You're going to have to fit it a little bit and get it on as tight as you can. And I'll do that right now cuz I've already um I've already cleaned it up a bit with my knife to the size that it needs to be, sanded it down a little with some rough sandpaper. So I think it's ready to go together now. Um, yeah, I don't really know what else to say before I put it together. But there is, um, you, can, you can tell that one side is different than the other side. Usually the straight side is the top and the curved side is usually the bottom like that. And also, there's a pointy on the end of the handle. One end is pointy and one end is round. So it's pretty much only goes one way. Now, that's going to be snug on there. You'll notice that if you turn it around, it goes easier. There's like a bigger hole on this side. But don't try to put, the, don't try to put it on that way just because it fits easier. That's there for a reason. And I'll show you why in a minute. So we're actually going to put it in the tight hole here. So the curve is facing down. I'm just going to drop it on the concrete floor a couple times. I did this earlier and I actually did it on an anvil, but anyway, here we go. Now you're going to want it to be a tight snug, tight fit. And it'll be a little something like that. You can tell that this axe head has been hit a few times. I hit it a few times myself. It's got some character, but I think it's going to be a good quality steel and it's going to hold an edge nice and sharp. Alright guys, this is going to be part two of uh, the axe handle replacement. I had to clear some memory from my camera device, but anyway. Um, yeah, so... I bought this handle and on part one I talk a little bit about prepping it for putting it on and but you could actually make a handle if you had some hardwood and some time and patience you could make a handle um, I like the old iron heads because they're you know good quality metal and I'm gonna save a dollar because I don't have to go out and buy a whole axe the handle was five bucks it was like four dollars and ninety nine cents you could probably get them cheaper than that, or if you make it yourself, you know, you could probably do it for free. But anyway, I'm going to continue here. I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to drive it on a little further if I can. It's starting to get tight, but I just want to make sure it's on as far as possible. So anyway, that seems to be about as far as she's going to go. It's nice and tight around the bottom there. There's a tiny, tiny gap at the front, but it's minuscule and it's nothing to worry about. She's on there nice and tight. And on part one, I discussed how this opening on top is actually a little bit bigger than the opening on the bottom. And there's a reason for that because uh, and there's a slice in this handle there's a reason for that too when what you need to do is put a wedge in here I've got an aluminum wedge and it's got to, it's a Christmas tree taper it's got cuts so uh, once you put it in it can't back out that's what those grooves are for in that uh, it's a wedge this is an aluminum wedge now in the bottom, like I said, it's nice and tight all the way around. I just drove it on a little bit further, so there's a little bit of uh, cart like peelings or whatever from the steel cutting into the wood because I drove it on a little further than I cut it for. But um, 
Yeah, so the reason why this top hole is a little bigger is because once you put this wedge in, it's going to expand. And then your axe head can't come off because um, this hole is bigger and it's tighter down down in the bottom. So the tighter spot won't be able to come up over the expanded part once you expand it by putting a wedge in here. Now there's a slight, slight gap at the front. It's bigger than the one down the bottom, but that's okay too. I'm going to do something about that. And there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Um, first thing I'm going to do is put this aluminum wedge in. I think I've got the axe head where I want. I've got it on the right way. And it's the handle is sticking up uh, an eighth of an inch beyond uh, the axe head itself. And I'm going to center this uh, wedge in the center of the handle here. This is a big aluminum wedge, but uh, there are smaller steel wedges that you can get. And if you have the small steel ones, you can put them on 45 or 90 degree angles. But this is a wide aluminum wedge, and it's made for a cut like this. That's why the handle has a long cut in it. So, yeah. Now, if you don't have wedges, I've seen people put things different. Like, uh, you can make a wedge out of a piece of steel. You can uh, cut grooves in it if you have to. I've actually seen people put a homemade handle in or handle and put like screws in the top just to make it expand a little bit. And there's another thing you can do is uh, water. After you put this handle in and uh, get it tight and wedged, you can take the upside down and put it in a bucket of water. And that will swell, like the, the wood will swell a bit when it's wet. That's another trick you can do, or a trick I've seen people do. wedge is in there pretty much flush now with the handle and that really expands this this wooden part of the handle so it's not going to come off and it's going to be way tighter than it was when you first drove it on so uh, <coughs> since since this wedge is aluminum it really mushrooms out nice and flattens out nice and it's pretty easy to work with because aluminum is a little softer than steel. So, <clears throat> now if this was a real good fit, it is a real good fit on the bottom here, which is perfect. But on the top, it's not a real good fit. You can do a couple things about that. Like I said, you can put it in water. Um, i seen one guy, he used uh, wood filler glue in there. I've got uh, Gorilla Glue. And it's, this is a really good fit, especially down below. But and it's and it's swelled out nice with this wedge. But I'm just gonna put a little bit of Gorilla Glue in the cracks here on the front and back, and uh, then I'll activate it with water. Gorilla Glue needs to be activated with water anyway. You have to use water to make it work, and the water helps the wood swell up, like I was mentioning before. So uh, yeah, I've got this. This will probably work just dandy the way it is now, but. Just for a double, just to make sure, for an extra precaution, I'm going to put Gorilla Glue in there, get it wet, or maybe I might even submerge the whole, this whole end in water, so that'll swell the wood, and yeah, it'll give me a super awesome fit, and uh, that's about it. There she is. It's not, uh, it's not a huge axe, as you can see, but it's perfect size for me and for what I need to do, and yeah. I paid five bucks for the handle and I just put in a little bit of work. Uh, I already had the aluminum wedge, I already had one. So yeah, that's about it for this, for this episode I guess. Like I said, you can make the handle yourself, you can use different types of wedges, you can, uh, yeah, different uh, tips and tricks here, but I, uh, 
I sharpened this up because it was an old iron axe or an old iron head and I like old iron. So I just put an edge on it and I think it's pretty much good to go. I might put one of these uh, Mr. John 613 stickers on here too. Probably uh, almost out of time for my video here. I did it. I do have a video of how to apply these decals. I had these decals custom made at a swap meet car show. <clears throat> I don't know how good it'll stick to a, a handle of a tool because you're constantly using the the tools so you're constantly wearing the handle the handle is like the biggest one of the biggest wearing parts because you're constantly grabbing on it so this sticker might not last long but I'm gonna try it anyway make I usually rub them in real good before I peel the final layer off And you pretty much have to, especially working with something like this. Should have cleaned the wood. She should have cleaned the wood off better. This wood is just bare wood. It has no lacquer, no finish to it at all. So there's not much for the sticker to stick to, except for a dry, dusty chunk of wood, which is not the best for this, for these decals. Anyway. There it is. I might put, maybe I might put a clear coat over that, but like I said, it's just something, something for chopping up small pieces, nothing major. It's just an old axe. That's it for this episode, guys. Check out my uh, next episodes, and if you're not